Befrienders is a nonprofit organization that provides companionship, support, and advocacy for aging population throughout the Gallatin Valley of Montana. I'd like to introduce to you Crystal. Hey, Crystal, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Good, good. It's a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. I love um, the idea behind Befrienders. I've never heard of it before. Um, so why was this nonprofit started? Yeah, so our founder over 25 years ago was actually at the grocery store and he had hmm. seen um, an elderly woman struggling getting the groceries in her car. Wow. And he just being, you know, a kind hearted person, he asked her if she needed help. Mm -hmm. um, she said she'd love it. And so she, he loaded the um, groceries into the car and then he realized, okay, she's going to struggle when she gets home. Mm -hmm. So yes, I helped her here, but what about when she gets there? Yeah. Um, and so he, you know, asked for permission if he could follow her home. She said yes. Mm -hmm followed her home, loaded her groceries into the car, and then realized, you know, the sidewalks need shovel because we have heavy snow here in Montana yeah. wow. and a couple other things. And so just having that moment and that interaction with that one individual kind of sparked this whole um, organization. Oh. Um, and wow. then, you know, he took it from there and started, we have a local university here. And mm -hmm. so he started working with the college students and developing the program. And here we are now 26 years later. Wow, that is awesome. What a vision. What a visionary yeah. he was. I mean, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah. So what do you wish to accomplish? Wow. So we have always been, um, we kind of consider ourselves kind of a homegrown organic organization. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, our board of directors is really, with our population growing so big, we're one of the fastest growing um, cities in, you know, in the United States. Also with the baby boom pop population reaching retirement. Mm -hmm. Our board has decided this the year to like make a stake and to grow. Mm -hmm. And so um, they hired me in November as their first time exec full time executive director. Hmm. And when I got started, we had over 38 names on our waiting list of seniors. Wow. And I, you know, started getting in and trying to getting volunteers. And it seemed like the more that I placed in the program, the more seniors I kept getting on the waiting list. And, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so I say that we, um, you know, for every senior we place, we probably get two more on our waiting list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you see yourself, I, to me, I just think franchise. I mean, because there's home care systems and things like that. They're, they're all over the place. But this seems like such a good opportunity to do some sort of a franchise thing in different cities throughout, the, throughout our country or the world. Um, anything coming down the pikes? In that we regard? are. Okay, yeah, so cool. we are in a three year strategic plan, and wow. at the end of the three years, we hope we have all of our policies and procedures and all of our trainings and everything to that point that we can actually package it up mm -hmm. and work with other areas um, around you know, Montana and hopefully in the United States. That'd be pretty cool. That is so wonderful. Oh, I just love that. Absolutely <laughs> love that. So, kind of in that vein, what did you do that made an impact on your community in the last six months? Wow, in the last six months. You know, I think we have been growing at such a huge rate. I think just being really proud of getting this full-time person in here. We started a program up at MSU, with the, which is Montana State University, uh -huh. with the community health program. Hmm. And so we actually have interns that are being placed in our program, and they're getting that hands-on experience working with the elderly population. Uh -huh. And so I think we're, I'm really proud that we're actually getting some of these college students that hands-on hands experience that uh -huh. they haven't gotten before. Uh -huh. Um, and so with their help and with, you know, having a first full-time staff, we have been able to double our amount of placements in the first six months that um, I've been here. God, that is awesome. That is so wonderful. So uh, who is the original founder? His name is Peter Merrill, and he um, unfortunately has passed away. Uh -huh. um, but his wife, Carol Merrill, is still on our board and really active and kind of holds his vision for us as well. Oh, that is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So you may have already answered this, but what do you have coming in the near future? Yeah, you know, right now, our the volunteers that we have in our program that we place with the seniors have to be 18 years of age. Uh -huh. um, you know, they're background checked and you put through, a, you know, a training on what to expect to be in our program. Um, but we are looking at maybe piloting a program on what it would look like to get even younger people in, maybe oh, high wow. school students. Nice. Um, uh -huh. You know, it's... I just think back and the only experience I ever had was with my grandparents, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you know, with the changing environment that we have and knowing that there's going to be a large increase in the elderly population, I think it's really important that we get Mm -hmm. as much experience with younger people as we can working with them and just talking with them. They have so much to, you know, it's part of that intergenerational learning. It really is. I mean, I'm I'm now uh, listening to the audio book Sapiens and about the tribalness of of how we have evolved through, you know, millions of years and things like that. And, And just having... You know, the older people and younger people interacting, that's just, it just feeds your soul. It's so super important, you know, yeah. for both the younger you and know, the older. kind of a silly example, but it's, you know, it's so heartwarming. We have um, one senior who wanted to learn how to ride our bus system here because they had mm-hmm. lost their license and mm-hmm. couldn't get around anymore. And um, we had a volunteer that wanted help um, becoming more of like a teacher. Mm-hmm. and because she was in school and wanting to look at that career and so we actually placed her with a senior who was a mm. teacher in the past life wow. and she was able to also help her navigate the bus system Aww. so it's just the simple things that are so rewarding for both people yeah doing something simple like that opens up somebody's life I mean they can go yeah. somewhere they feel independent again you know that's super important yeah. wow that's beautiful that's really beautiful mm-hmm. so Crystal, so what positive news do you have for our viewers today You know, I would just um, ask everyone to just open their hearts and really take the opportunity to listen to these older people in your communities. You know, at first when I started, I thought of how sad it might be because you're thinking about, you know, they might be moving to a new community to be closer to family. So they've lost all their friends and their house. Um, They have people dying around them all the time. They have health concerns that are popping up. And I thought it would be really, you know, sad for me to be in this position. Mm -hmm. But as I've sat there and I've talked with these seniors, I get so much hope from them. Mm -hmm. Because they've experienced so much things that I have never even witnessed. And I've learned, you know, I get to talk with each senior for, you know, an hour or two. And then I, you know, place them with a volunteer. But Mm -hmm. um, every senior that I talk with has something valuable to say and something valuable to give. And Mm -hmm. so I just... I just ask that everybody just takes that chance to say hi to someone that was older than them or Aww. just, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's <don't> know. <laughs> beautiful. I love that. And there's wisdom in, in those years, you know, and and there's kindness. Most of the time there's kindness. Some people are having issues, but, you know, yeah. it, it's just so important to just keep that cycle of our tribe going and interacting with older and younger people because we learn from each other. Yeah, it's definitely. awesome. It's awesome. Well, Crystal, is there anything else you want to share with our our Global Positive News Network um, audience at this time? You know, I love talking to people. So if you have further questions or um, answers I can help you with, I would love if you guys would just reach out. Okay. We certainly will. Absolutely, we will. So I want to urge our viewers at Global Positive News Network to go to Crystal's site. It's not your site, but it's the, <laughs> it's the Befrienders site, and it is BefriendersBozeman.org. Take a look around. You can be a volunteer. You could donate. And there's even a, a program called Adopt a Match. Crystal, you want to tell us a little bit about Adopt a Match? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, we um, are looking for organizations or people. Um, we've done our math, and it takes about $500 um, to actually make what we consider our match with a senior and a volunteer. And that $500 is with time mm-hmm. and our office space and all that kind of stuff. And so if you want to make a big impact, that $500 really supports a senior and a volunteer for an entire year. Wow, that's awesome. That is fantastic and very doable, I think. That, it that's is. so great. Well, Crystal, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts here at Global Positive News Network. And I wish you the best success in the future. And um, I look forward to maybe coming out and taking a look at your facility and meeting some of those wonderful people. Oh, we'd love it. All right, <laughs> thank you. Crystal. Well, thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. You too. Okay, thanks.